You are now listening to episode 23 of the Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. Episode 23, Top 10 Natural Foods for Detox. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com. All right, welcome to the Real Health Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Dr. Taylor Crick, and this week we're going to be talking to you about a really popular topic, and it's top foods for natural detox, okay? And so this is some content that was delivered at a workshop I gave recently at Natural Grocers here in Salt Lake. And so Natural Grocers, just a little background, Natural Grocers reached out to me and asked me to come and teach a workshop for their grand opening. And so I thought, you know, what's a popular topic today? And so nutrition is always popular. Weight loss is always popular. But detox along with those things is really, really popular. So I thought, what are the top foods for natural detox? And it was initially the top five foods for natural detox. But as I started developing the content for this presentation, five was not enough. So what I'm going to give you today are 10 foods, the top 10 foods for natural detoxification to stimulate your body's natural ability to detox. And what we're going to look at is we're going to look at these foods in pairs. So it's really five pairs, five pairs of two, 10 total foods that are the top foods to help your body's natural ability to detox. And one thing that we went over at the talk was, you know, what is the need for detox? Why do people need to detox? And we're not going to cover that today, but I will just briefly mention that, you know, your body's constantly being exposed to toxins. Just last week, a new study came out from the Environmental Working Group and Duke University, and they tested, I believe it was 26 women, tested 26 women who all were positive for a potential endocrine disruptor that you find in nail polish, okay? And so that's just one of, that's just one study that came out last week. But go back and listen to past podcast episodes. Listen to Are You a Toxic Waste Bucket? Listen to the, uh, uh, Toxic Top 5, Toxic Top 10, uh, personal care products. Listen to, uh, the other one is, Toxicity and Natural Ways to Detox, a workshop that we had, you're going to get a really good background on why it's so important for detoxification. If this is your first time joining us, like I said, my name is Dr. Taylor Crick. I am the host of the Real Health Podcast. I'm also the owner and operator of Align Utah, a wellness, a functional chiropractic and wellness clinic in Salt Lake City. We concentrate in corrective chiropractic care, so that's spinal corrective chiropractic care, functional nutrition, detoxification, supplementation, exercise, mindset, a holistic wellness approach to keeping your body healthy and well. And not only, you know, fighting and reversing disease, but also preventing things from coming on. And I'll just tell one more quick story that today, you know, I had a patient dump Uh, a medication. And this is just one of the examples, one of the many examples of what we get to see in our office. Look it up on YouTube, search online Utah, look at our testimonials. Uh, But we just had a patient today get off of a medication and she said she's been on antidepressants for 15 years. Okay. And today was the day that she brought in her antidepressant and she dumped it in our drug freedom tank. Okay. And so that's one of the happiest things that we see in our office is patients being able to get off their medication by working with their body's natural design. And one of the body's natural designs, you know, it's designed to let the good in and let the bad out, keep the bad out. And one of its natural designs is natural detoxification. So that's exactly what I talk, what I want to talk about and what we're going to go into right now. So your body has, you know, several ways of detoxing. And you can think about this. It's all the ways that your body gets rid of things. One is the lungs. You know, you can breathe things out. Uh, Another one is the skin, you know, so sweating things out, getting toxins out through the sweat. That's why things like saunas can be great for detox. Another one is the kidneys. That's, you know, where you're going to filter your urine and get things out through the kidneys. Another one would be the intestines. So the intestines is one of my favorite topics. Gut health. Go back and listen to the gut health podcast. This is one of the most important topics because if you have a leaky gut, 
it is going to let the bad in along with the good. Okay, so the job is to, to let the good in and keep the bad out, and it's going to let the bad in, so your body's going to become more toxic. And then the last detox pathway that goes along with the intestines is the liver. The liver detoxifies your blood, then it puts your toxins into what's called your bile, and your bile gets excreted out through the intestines. So the liver is especially what we're going to focus on when we talk about the top foods for natural detox. We call it, you know, love your liver because the liver is so incredibly important when it comes to natural detox. So I'm just going to, you know, go into this a little bit because we're going to talk about it when we talk about some of the benefits of these foods, what they stimulate. So one of the things, you know, your liver actually filters two quarts of blood per minute. And the, the amazing thing is, is it's going to filter out, a healthy liver will filter out 99% of toxins on the first pass through of blood. Okay, and that's crazy. So it takes the toxins from the blood. Then your liver has two phases. It's a two-phase, what's called enzymatic detox pathways. Phase one, all we need to know about phase one is that phase one takes toxins like a chemical, like uh, something that you've breathed in, like the one that we just talked about that was found in nail polish. I think it's called TPHP. So your liver would take that out of the blood. Phase one is it turns it into a more usable, more excretable, more water-soluble uh, form. So it just changes form. It, it doesn't completely dissolve it or disintegrate it. It just changes it from a toxin into another version of that toxin. Then phase two is actually able to take that version of the toxin and eliminate it. That's water-soluble product, so it's eliminated via the gallbladder, through the bile, and then through the intestines, through the stool, or through the kidneys and the urine. Okay, so phase one and phase two, that's the important thing that your liver has two phases. Now, one of the other important things is that phase one, changing these toxins into a more usable, more breakdownable, more metabolizable product is, is uh, costly. It's a, it's an oxidative process. Okay. So you're using a lot of, there's a lot of oxidation happening, which means that, you know, that's why it's an important thing that we have antioxidants. Okay. So that's one, one of the things I just wanted to throw out there that a lot of the byproducts of these phases are oxidants or free radicals. And that's what we need antioxidants for. So a lot of the foods we're going to talk about today are antioxidants. So we've heard of antioxidants being good for our immune system too, probably really good for natural detox. Okay, so phase one, just to throw some things out there, you need a lot of B vitamins. You need things like magnesium. You need things like glutathione. Glutathione is your body's master detoxifier. You need that in phase one. If phase one is working well, and phase two is not, phase two is sluggish, you're going to be what's called a pathological detoxifier because you're going to have all these toxins that are turned into this new form, but they're not able to be cleared as quickly. So you got to have phase two working at the same level as phase one, or you'll be what's called a pathological detoxer. So for phase two, some of the important things are, you know, your different amino acids, methionine, cysteine, glycine, Glutathione is another one that's needed in phase two. Even things like zinc and some minerals are needed for your phase two. Then the next thing is after the liver is you want to have a diet that's high in fiber because fiber is going to pass through your intestinal tract and bind the toxins in the bile and get them out. That's why it's so important to have regular bowel movements for proper detox because if that, you know, if that fecal matter is just sitting in there, that's, that's just toxic, you know, it's toxic. That's why your body wants to get rid of it. So you want to get rid of it as quickly as possible. You want to be making regular bowel movements and fiber is really important for that. Okay. So that is enough background on detoxing. Let's get into what are the foods. Okay. So the number one food pair. The number one food pair that we're going to go into is broccoli and Brussels sprouts. So number one and number two, broccoli and Brussels sprouts. And, you know, I picked those two uh, because they're my two favorite, but really it could be any foods from what's called the, the cruciferous vegetables. So cruciferous means cross-like. So if you cut these open, you cut broccoli or Brussels sprouts or cauliflower, you look at them at the stalk or at the root, and they have a, a cross-like look. They're from the brassica family. So some other examples of these, which we could group into this same category, are things like arugula, kale, 
cauliflower, cabbage, turnip, collard greens, bok choy, radish, rutabaga, uh, even, you know, like uh, watercress. You know, that's the last one that I can think of. And the thing with the brassica family, they're, they're awesome for detoxification. They contain high levels of sulfur and different phytonutrients that are like, like sulforaphane, which is a sulfur containing, and it leads to an increased production of glutathione. So glutathione is your body's master antioxidant and master detoxifier. And you have to be producing enough glutathione. You can't take it supplementally, really. You have to take the building blocks of glutathione and stimulate your production naturally. And these cruciferous vegetables, these broccoli and Brussels sprouts, do that. They boost glutathione, which helps with phase one and phase two of liver detox. There's also things like uh, called isothiocyanates, okay? So glutathione is a thiol. These are some more thiols. Thiols are a measure of DNA repair. They're a measure of antioxidant capacity. So here's another one, isothiocyanates. They promote the elimination of carcinogens, okay? So the, the breakdown and the detoxification of carcinogens are known cancer causers, what's called xenobiotics, foreign substances, toxins, and they enhance tumor suppressor protein. So it actually stimulates tumor suppression, these uh, these cyanides found in broccoli and Brussels sprouts, the thiols. They're also very high in vitamin C, which is a potent antioxidant, and they're really high in fiber. One of the things that you want to be careful with, with this member or this uh, this family of foods, these foods from the brassica family, you really want to make sure that you don't eat them raw. Okay, so you've probably heard even me talk about, you know, the importance of raw foods, and raw foods are incredibly important, raw vegetables especially, juicing them, eating them, salads, all that stuff, you want to be bumping up your raw foods, but these members of the of the brassica family, they're what's called goitrogenic when they're raw. That means that they block thyroid hormone, they block the production of thyroid hormone, so if you are hypothyroid or even if you're not, really, you want to be careful about eating too many of these foods raw. You can lightly steam them, and that gets rid of the goitrogenic properties that makes them a little more easily digestible and absorbable, and you're still going to get the good detox, the good enzymes for the gut and the liver. So you want to steam these. That even goes for things like uh, kale. So we eat a lot of kale, you know, like in, in salads or something, or arugula. You want to steam kale. You don't want to be eating a ton of raw kale. Kale's, you know, a big buzzword today. Everyone's eating so much kale and you see it on shirts. Oh, kale, yes. Things like that. Uh, but you, you want to be steaming it. That it goes for juicing too. You don't really want to juice these things, uh, without lightly steaming them. Okay. So that's number one and number two. Number one food pair, broccoli and Brussels sprouts. Number two is going to be garlic and ginger. Okay, both of these are also well known for boosting the immune system too, because both have antiviral and antibacterial properties. Garlic is another one though, transitioning from broccoli and Brussels sprouts, another one that is sulfur containing. It's got high levels of sulfur and it's a phase two stimulator. It stimulates phase two of detox. Both garlic and ginger are going to stimulate bile flow. So bile is what comes from the gallbladder that takes these toxins from the liver, basically carries them to the intestines where fiber binds up with it and it all comes out as fecal matter. Okay, that's your digestion 101. So these both stimulate bile flow. So along with a high fiber diet and along with a healthy functioning liver, going to stimulate detox regularly. Garlic can actually aid in heavy metal detox by it re actually reverses the depletion of antioxidant enzymes. So it boosts these antioxidant enzymes that get depleted when you have heavy metal toxicity, when you have lead or mercury toxicity. So garlic is important if you're detoxing from heavy metals. There's also phytochemicals in garlic and ginger that aid in, in the breakdown of fat deposits. So some of these, some of these toxins are fat soluble, which means they live in your fat cells and they're hard to get out because they're stuck and they're trapped in these fat cells. And these phytochemicals can actually break down fat deposits and help get some of these toxins out. Now, ginger, 
Uh, another thing, actually, allicin is in garlic and selenium, uh, heavy or potent antioxidant. Last thing that I just saw in my notes here. Uh, ginger has high concentrations of gingerol, which is actually anti-inflammatory. So it helps decrease inflammation and helps provide anti-spasmodic effects on the digestive system. So ginger is really helpful for the digestive system. Now, with both of these, you know, how can you take them? Uh, garlic, you know, crushed, powdered, you can add it into anything. It's just a really good flavorful thing. One thing that I'll mention too that, that I didn't mention at the beginning is You'll find this in common with all these foods we're going to talk about. They've got really bright colors, and they've got really strong flavors. And that is because the chemicals in these foods that produce bright colors and strong flavors, that you know, just like spices and herbs and things are really good for your health, that's because they help stimulate natural detox. So the things that cause bright colors, bright red, bright green, uh, bright yellow are really good natural detoxers and the things with strong flavors, garlic and ginger, two of the strongest flavors that you can think of. And they're really, really good detoxers. My favorite way to take ginger, there's a lot of different, you know, foods out there with ginger now. You know, you can shred it on top of things. You can put it on all kinds of stuff. But my favorite way to take ginger is to juice it. Ginger is really high in fiber, but you're typically not eating enough of it to for the fiber to even be an impact because it's, you know, a little bit goes a long way. So I don't like to make any juice without fresh ginger in it. It is my favorite thing to have in a juice. It's my favorite flavor. I think it makes the juice. So I never make a detox juice without ginger in it. Number three, the number three food pair. So that was number uh, one and two, broccoli and Brussels sprouts. Three and four, garlic and ginger. Four and five, beets and artichokes. Wait, is that right? One, two, three, four, five, and six beets and artichokes. So this is the number three food pair, beets and artichokes. So beets are going to contain, the, and it's another you know strong color. You know, beets is almost like a food dye. You know, you spill that on a shirt, it's going to be red and pink for a long time. Or, you know, your, uh, your bowel movements are going to be red and pink if you're eating a lot of beets or juicing a lot of beets. But they contain a lot of beneficial compounds, including betaine, betalanes, betalanes, fiber, very high in fiber. So you can shred beets over a salad. You know, a lot of doctors will prescribe to eat raw beets because of their high fiber content. They're really high in iron. They're really high in beta, beta cyanin folate, a B vitamin, and betanin. So one of the best ones of those is betaine. betaine. Uh, it's pronounced both ways. I've heard it both ways. This can actually help regenerate liver cells, and it actually will stimulate a lot of your heavy, heavy detoxing antioxidants, like one called superoxide dismutase, another called catalase, and another called glutathione, which we've talked about before. And those three are some of your most potent antioxidants for detoxification. So you can get that from beets, you know, shred it on top of something. But another way that I like to take beets is juiced again. And the, the betaine stays intact 100% when you juice beets. So you're still getting the full cancer fighting and antioxidant fighting benefits from beet juice. They also help to cleanse the bloodstream. So that's one of the benefits, you know, beets have been used for years to help cleanse the bloodstream. And so have the next one, number six, artichokes. The reason that I paired these two together is because, in my opinion, they're a little bit more rare. They're a little bit, you know, I, I feel like I eat them pretty regularly, but I think for the average American, you know, a beet and an artichoke are, are pretty rarely consumed, but they're really, really healthy. So the reason I pair these together is because they're a little bit outside of the box for a lot of people, but they're really, really good. They're really, really flavorful. You know, most people's idea of artichoke is spinach artichoke dip at Applebee's maybe, uh, and, and it's a really good vegetable. Uh, so artichokes, they help cleanse the liver and the bloodstream. They've been used for thousands of years to help cleanse the liver and the bloodstream. They contain really high levels of, of different phytonutrients, which help stimulate bile flow and actually help protect the liver and the cell membranes. Artichokes, you know, a few years ago, they did a test of all the foods. The FDA did the test uh, of all the foods in their antioxidant capacity. Artichokes were in the top four 
of the ORAC, the antioxidant capacity. So they're very, very high in these antioxidants. They're really high in a couple things called cinnarin and silmarin that helps regenerate liver cells. And they're actually hepatoprotective, which means they protect liver cells from liver toxicity. So they decrease inflammation and actually are good for your cells. It's cell loving especially the cells of the liver. So as your liver's doing all this detox, you have a heavy toxic burden, your liver's working overtime, what artichokes are going to do is they're going to keep your liver working strong and keep your liver cells healthy. So that's the number three food pair, beets and artichokes, number five and six. Number four food pair is cucumbers and chia seeds. So these would be number seven and eight, we have two left after this. But cucumbers and chia seeds, and you know, if you're, if you don't know much about either of these, you might think, how are those grouped together? Cucumbers and chia seeds. But cucumbers and chia seeds, we group, I group them together because they're both gelatinous foods. They turn to a gelatin-like substance in your digestive tract and really go through your digestive tract and help sweep out your digestive tract. So that is why both of these are such good detoxifiers. Cucumbers are a natural diuretic. They've got a lot of water in them. So they help in kidney detox. A lot of the ways that people will take cucumbers, you know, a lot of raw on salads, um, you know, cucumber, you can juice a cucumber. But a lot of times they're cut up. Uh, you know, a lot of times you think of cucumbers, what are they used for? They're used on your skin because they're they're cooling and they're anti-inflammatory but most commonly is like to make a cucumber water or a cucumber juice you can put cucumbers in water with something like a strawberry or mint or another like lemon some other flavor and it's really really good to have cucumber water cucumber juice is great it's a great one to juice because it produces a lot of juice because it's you know high water content it's also got something in it called curcubitacins, okay? So that is a phytonutrient that's an antioxidant in cucumbers that it can actually induce cancerous cell death. So it can actually cause apoptosis or cause cancer cells to have induced death, which is what you want. You know, cancer, the problem with cancer is that the cells don't die. They just continually regenerate and they just never die when they're supposed to. Well, curcubitacins can actually induce cancer cell death. So that's why cucumbers are, are number seven. Number eight, chia seeds. Uh, chia seeds are actually a superfood. They are the highest protein content of any grain. So they're really high in protein. So chia seeds, they're also high, uh, 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 aside from just protein, they're really, really high in fiber. They're really fibrous. They're high in antioxidants. And they're high in omega-3 fatty acids. So that's one of the reasons why chia seeds are good is they help level out your omegas, which are anti-inflammatory, help protect your cell membranes, help keep your cells functioning so that your cells can let the good in and let the bad outs. For cellular detox, really, really important to have antioxidants, to have protein, to have omega-3s, and to have fiber. That's why chia seeds are so great. The other reason that chia seeds are so great is they can actually absorb up to 10 times their weight in water. So if you've ever, you know, had a kombucha with chia seeds, you've ever had a juice with chia seeds, sometimes I'll make juice or make a smoothie and add chia seeds in it and, you know, they're just floating in there. Uh, and that is because they, they're so bulky that they become gelatinous. They absorb up to 10 times their weight in water. And sometimes, you know, you have these drinks and you almost have to chew through the chia seeds. They're kind of like jelly. But that bulks food, okay? So that's really good actually for weight loss too. It can actually block carb metabolism and slow down blood sugar spikes. So adding chia to your meals or to your drinks or having some chia right before a meal can actually slow down your blood sugar spikes, help carb metabolism. But it's going to bulk your food and aid in digestion and elimination because as this bulk passes through your digestive tract, it's going to take all the bad stuff with it and just get rid of it. So they're so high in fiber that you're actually going to excrete that bulk pretty quickly. It's not going to, it's not going to stay stuck in your digestive tract. It's going to flow right through there and really clean out your digestive tract. So that's why cucumbers and chia seeds are both excellent detoxifiers. Number five, the fifth pair, the fifth food pair, number nine and number 10 in our top 10 foods for natural detox are your herbs, cilantro and parsley. 
Okay, so cilantro and parsley, a lot of people can't tell the difference between the two. But cilantro and parsley are really, really great detoxifiers. So cilantro is actually a natural chelator, which can bind heavy metals. So these are things like mercury, lead, cadmium. So that's something that you want to have in your diet all the time just to get rid of the, the heavy metals that you're exposed to. Now, if you're going through something like a, uh, you're getting your amalgam fillings removed or you're trying to do a heavy metal detox, you're going to need more than just cilantro, in my opinion. But there are clinical studies that have proved that heavy metal chelation Chelation means binding, so it's a natural chelator, which means it's a binder. But using cilantro and chlorella, natural chelators, it can naturally remove an average of 87% of lead, 91% of mercury, and 74% of aluminum from the body within 42 days. Clinical studies have shown that. So if you're going through a heavy metal detox, you think you have heavy, heavy metal toxicity, you know you have heavy metal toxicity, cilantro should definitely be a part of your detox. So should chlorella. Uh, I don't think that those two should be the exclusive detoxing agents that you use, but they should definitely be a part of it. And for regular natural detox, this is something that should be added into everything. So you think about a lot of these, you know, you could make a salad with almost all of these. You chop up cilantro and parsley. You get some, you get cucumbers on there. Maybe not chia seeds, but maybe you put chia seeds on there. You cut up some beets. You have some broccoli or Brussels sprouts or another cruciferous vegetable, some ste something steamed on there. Maybe you have an artichoke with it. You can get all this in one meal. But that's cilantro. That's a natural chelator. Really high also. Both of these really high in chlorophyll, which is what gives them their green color. Really good for cleansing the bloodstream. Parsley, another thing, is really good for cleansing the bloodstream. There's two compounds in parsley. One's called apigenin and one called meristocinin. Uh, and those both work to boost liver enzyme production, so it increases the enzymes of the liver. So that's your phase one and phase two enzymes that help break down these toxins into the more metabolizable forms, so it boosts those enzymes. And those compounds in parsley both have anti-cancer properties. So there's two types of parsley, flat leaf or curly or, or Italian is a flat leaf. Uh, they're both anti-inflammatory. They're both the same. They both have the same health benefits. Uh, all, both of those, cilantro and parsley, are also good for your cholesterol. Increase your good cholesterol, decrease your bad. So that's something that, you know, you're not often going to just have like a bowl of cilantro or parsley. But it's something that you can add into probably one meal a day. Uh, if it's something that you have, you know, you can juice it. We've been talking about juicing a lot. You can definitely juice these things, and that, that way you can get them in bulk a little bit more. But never make a salad without adding cilantro or, cilantro or parsley on top of your salad. Never make a salad without shredding some uh, ginger over it. Never make a salad without shredding beets or slicing beets over it. And, it, you know, just by branching out of the box and, you know, not making the same salad every time, you can really get a huge variety. And, it, you know, it's not like I eat salad every day. I, I, I don't I don't even come close. We eat a variety of foods. They're so flavorful. They're so tasteful. They're, they're so good because we're using these things. We're using things like turmeric and curcumin. We're using things like cayenne. We're using uh, things like garlic powder. And all these spices and herbs are very, very flavorful and very, very good. So add these in. The last thing is we're just going to talk the last five tips, you know, because the bottom line is just eat real food. And if you've listened to the podcast before, you know that that's what we're talking about. Or if you've listened to even, you know, like uh, Underground Wellness with Sean Croxton, he's got the, he wears a shirt called Jerf, just eat real food. And that is the bottom line. So five things that I'll leave you with real quickly. Number one, eat the colors of the rainbow. Eat the colors every single day. Eat red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, uh, and white. You know, that, that's a, a rule of thumb in, in uh, functional medicine. Eat the colors of the rainbow. Number two, minimize your sugars. You've heard that before from me or from somebody else. Minimize your sugars, including your grains. Number three, increase your good fats. Increase your avocados, your coconut products, your olives, olive oil, your grass-fed animal products, maybe your raw dairy if you do dairy, but raw only. Uh, and number four, eat clean animal products. Okay, so just like we're saying, uh, raw 
raw dairy, grass-fed animal products. Get them at natural grocers. Get them at Real Foods Market. You can get them through some vendors online where you can get some really healthy meats that you can order online. But you want to be very, very careful with your animal products because they're at the top of the food chain. That's number four. And number five tip, eliminate toxins and additives. Sweeteners, MSG, high fructose corn syrup, additives, colorings, chemicals, things like that. Just eat real food. But if you do those five things and you eat those 10 foods, you're going to stimulate your body's natural detoxification. And like we said at the beginning, when your body is detoxing at full capacity, your liver catches 99% of toxins on the first pass. So that is amazing. So yes, we live in a toxic world. Yes, you absolutely want to avoid your exposures. You want to know what you're being exposed to as far as your food supply, your personal care products, your bed, your mattress, things like that. You want to minimize your exposure to toxins, but you want to maximize your body's ability to filter out these toxins by eating these 10 foods. So as always, thanks for joining us. This is the Real Health Podcast. Make sure you check out our YouTube page. Make sure you check out our Facebook page. Make sure you go back into the archives and listen to past episodes. Share them with your friends and family. And then go to iTunes and give us a rating and a review. We really, really appreciate it. If you enjoy the content, stay tuned. We're going to have more coming to you in the next few weeks. We're going to keep it coming, teaching you how to to treat your body the way that it was designed to function. And in the meantime, you're going to continue to gain real health. So as always, this is Dr. Taylor. Talk to you guys next time. Thank you for listening to the Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com.